creation? Man, that's the word of the day. Beautiful. How about that? Amen. Amen. That's us. <laughs> so good to see you all. So good to be in worship together today. Let's start out by saying hey to everybody, but also, is there a first time visitor we need to recognize this morning? I know there's a couple of folks visiting. We welcome you today. A couple of there. Okay. Well, let's get right into the announcements. You know that the Helping Hands basket or the white basket's up front. As you go through the communion line, if you could drop some money in there, it goes straight to the community, helps those in need. Um, now's the first Sunday of the month. We're having children come on first Sunday now so they can have communion with family, with the church family, and they can learn all about how that works in the life of the congregation. Please come. Wednesday nights are a lot of fun. Have a lot of good food. So come and hang out, eat, have some fellowship, put your kids in a, a, a class, and all will be well. You may like to do crafts. We have a craft class. You can come and hang out and do some fun chores and uh, neat, make some neat items at one on Tuesdays. And there's a lot to say about homecoming, so y'all please read that. Anything you want to say to sum it up? Or that's it all right there? Good. Any further announcements that aren't on paper? Yes, ma'am. Peggy. Uh, the youth, we have six confirmands this year. I'm sure everyone can hear me, right? It's like, okay. A bigger sanctuary than over there. So, we tried to, last year with COVID and everything and the economy, instead of doing mentorship and paying for the kids' trip and everything else, having a guardian angel kind of thing where you can reveal yourself to the kid if you choose, but you need to follow safe sanctuary policies at all times. But I have six names on the table in the entryway there on those slips of paper. And even if you just pray for them through this process, they're at the halfway point. Or if you want to sponsor part of their process, that's all up to you. But showing them that behind the scenes, ministry in their behalf is always going on is a really important aspect as well. So I encourage, please pick up one of their names and each service, that way they have two families that are kind of have their back and are interceding with God on their behalf. Because while they may never know who it is, it's there's something magical about knowing that you've got people, just like when your name's on the prayer list and you know you got your church praying for you through a hard time. Getting through this class, some of them will say, is a hard time. They're laughing at me over there. So, just keeping them in the fold and letting them know they're part of a bigger community through this class is an awesome thing. So please, I encourage y'all to pick up names out there on the table. I don't know, Mikey's been waiting a long time. I don't know what Mikey's going to say. What you got, Mikey? We're going to have a dinner party on next Saturday, and so we're going to hike, and we'll have food. Uh, so, any of y'all? You just invited the whole church. <laughs> 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 I said, that's a surprise. <laughs> yes, Jack. Uh, I'm here for the uh, food bridge. We are in dire need of drivers and driver helpers. Uh, your hours would be whatever day you pick of the week, uh, Monday through Friday, except for <coughs> Thursday. And uh, from about 6.30 to about 9.30. And now the only thing is, you need to be able to lift up boxes of about 50 pounds. So uh, if you can help with any of any, either a driver or a driver's helper, a driver or myself. Thank you. Amen to that, Jack, and that's a, that's a dire need, so please pray about it, or maybe the Spirit will impress upon you someone you know outside the church that could also help. That would be great. Any other announcements? Roger's going to open up the Food Bridge building, Buddington building, for uh, lots of goodies that are left over. Be some breads and sweets, I would assume. So if those things are something you'd like to have after the service, just walk straight down the sidewalk to the building which is on your left. Anything else? Very good, let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for a new day, for this new opportunity we have to come and sit with our family and to share the word together, to share our prayers and praises together, to share life together for this brief moment. So would you come, Holy Spirit, 
blow a fresh wind and fresh fire, fresh faith into the congregation and let the revival continue. In Jesus' name, for His sake, amen. amen. Good time to lift our spirits. No better way than to sing. Everyone stand, we're going to sing to God be the glory. Let us pray. 
pray. Dear Lord, we invite now your blessing upon these gifts and those who give. We ask that you would inspire us to be the people you've created us to be so that we might can usher in your kingdom here on earth. So all this is for your good and your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
family together, being brothers and sisters in Christ. So why don't we stand now and greet our family in faith and share the love of Jesus with them for just a minute. Good morning. Some African language. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
I'll do it speaking in tongues and we'll all have to figure it out. <laughs> There's some very important scripture I want to share with you this morning. I mean, it is serious stuff. So y'all don't miss it. Pay attention. This is one that I really hope y'all have memorized or through April or your Sunday school teacher or your parents, your guardians. You will have it memorized very, very soon, right? It's from John, the third chapter, verses 16, that I want you to memorize, John 3, 16, and then 17. You give us 16, and I'll give us 17. Uh, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only, one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish and have everlasting life. Okay. Now let me add to that. It says, indeed, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. So have you ever seen a house that's all kind of ugly and broken down? It looks like if, if you stepped on the porch, it'd fall apart and kill you. <laughs> you know what that house needs to be? Nope. Condemned. There's no more good for that house. It's like an old shed. It's about, you know, it's just leaning in on itself, falling apart. You've ever seen something like that? A house or a shed or a building? We would call it condemned, meaning it's no longer good for use, no longer good, it's no longer safe to be in or involved with it, so we condemn it, meaning that you don't need to be around it. We're going to tear it down and clean it up. Jesus said he didn't come to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. Isn't that good news? So what if we can condemn people too? And that's not good, is it? We should never condemn anyone because they're, they're made in the image of God. They're God's child and He has a plan and a purpose for their life. So let's don't condemn each other. Let's say nice things to each other. Let's build each other up would be the opposite of that, right? We call it encouragement. So y'all offer encouragement, offer life to each other. Y'all can be sweet and kind, can't you? Is it, well, we'll work on it. <laughs> well, let me pray for y'all simple message this morning but I want y'all to keep focus on John 3.16 because that's one we got to have memorized because that means everything Lord thank you so much that you came to the world not to condemn us but to save us and that if we believe in you we might have eternal life so thank you Father God for your son Jesus for his sacrifice on the cross that we might be saved for an eternity but also for today so, Lord, save us today, right now, in Jesus' name. Fill these young people with your Holy Spirit. Enable them to serve you in this world. Protect them from the evil one. And just keep them healthy and happy, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So it's that element in our service where we share praises, prayer requests. I didn't get anything on paper, but I bet there's something on your hearts this morning. How can we pray today? Yes, ma'am, Linda. Um, for college students who are going to go on spring break. Mm -hmm. Okay. Remember who they are for college students going on spring break coming up? Yes, ma'am, Bonnie? I think Rick Fife still needs prayers for his moving and his movers because... Friday, he All right, Friday, uh, Rick is moving. But I also have a praise because I was so disappointed that I brought my sister and we don't have a choir up there. And I just say a praise. I think we've got a youth choir coming up. That was, we just had one. Uh, that's a praise. Yeah, that's a praise. Yes. They're real. They're the real deal. They've been practicing and they just let it out. Yes, sir. Uh, Bob will now is much better. The infection seems to be clearing up. All right. The praise that Bob Wanell, he's one of our previous pastors, has been ill, but doing a little bit better. Things are looking positive. Amen. Yes, sir, John. driving test coming up. We pray for mailboxes and cars and all that stuff that could be in the way of her. Especially little squirrels. And... Well, that's exciting. Good news. Anything else on your heart, your mind? 
Pray for our world. Why do we need world peace? That's a big one, but we can do it. Yeah, they're beautiful right now. We get one whole week of it. <laughs> and then we're left with big bushes that we have to trim. <laughs> but they are beautiful right now. Thank you, Lord, for springtime and harvest. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Praise the Lord for the health of this church. Amen. I ain't hearing a lot of ailments and sicknesses. He's blessing <laughs> us all. Yeah, blessing us all, right. Just continue to pray for little Lee Johnson. There's been no update and they're waiting to hear results the last. Mm -hmm. Remember Lee. Keep praying for Lee. Pray hard and often. Even add it, especially this season of fasting. We're in our second week of Lent. So it's a good time to, you know, step up the prayers a little bit. Yes, sir, Ron. Uh, for Deborah Brigley. Deborah Brigley with blood cancer needs our prayers. He said, we do it, we don't do it. Yes, ma'am. Prayers for Terry for uh, not <coughs> mental health issues and uh, some kind of maybe a cancer diagnosis. We're going to pray against it and believe for better, but for, for her. Yes, ma'am, in the back. There she is, Donna. Um, my cousin Linda that I told y'all about about a month ago, she was diagnosed with melanoma cancer, so y'all will say for her. That's Linda? Linda. <coughs> Linda needs your prayer too. <coughs> yes, sir. Ed, oh, no, Ed's pointing. Somebody's. Oh, there you are. Sorry. Uh, all right. And that we can add all our other family members, loved ones, friends, the battling addictions. Amen. We, they need our prayers too, Paul. Uh, one of my friends was 29 weeks pregnant and lost her baby. Oh. Oh. So sorry to hear that. That was him. Lost loved ones. I know others, others of you are here today. You're grieving because you've lost loved ones. And we know we keep you lifted up. Let's pray. You're invited to come now to the altar space if you'd like to kneel. There's also time for that after communion if you want to kneel after you receive the elements. But as long as you pray with us right now, that's all we ask. in our minds. Bow your heads. Close your eyes if it helps you. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-present, ever-loving, all-knowing God, we thank you so much that none of these requests have caught you by surprise or off guard or at slumber, but you're aware and you care. And we are so thankful to serve a good God, a loving God who knows us, is concerned about us, and has a future and a plan for us. We thank you now, God, that we are able to pray to you and that you listen. So will you please take these prayer requests and work miracles on our behalf. And we know because we pray, it moves you to so move on our behalf, the behalf, behalf of your church, the body of Jesus. And we thank you, Jesus, for your ultimate sacrifice on the cross that we might have life and life in abundance today. And we feel it in this place. A little revival is in the air. And we want to catch it and we want to live into it and make us new people because of it. So thank you for newness, Lord. Thank you for a new start, a new day, a new life in you that we can receive mercy and forgiveness each day, that you can uh, straighten us up and get us right again and love us. We're so thankful for that relationship and the way it works. But we need your presence with us always, so come Holy Spirit of the living God. 
be in us, be among us, convict us of our sin that we repent of and that we confess even now. So hear our prayers, O oh God, as we confess our sin. We thank you that you're a God who's rich in mercy, a God who's ever near. So we trust your presence is with us. We feel it. And we want to be obedient. We want you to be happy with us as a church. So continue to unite us as one church, one family. We're going to be careful, Lord, that for all the good and all that's going on to give you the glory in these things. Especially as we watch you heal us. We give you the glory. And we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And it's through his name that we pray because he loved us first. And because he taught us to pray, we pray now saying, Our Father, our God, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We have not the temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thank you, church. Thank you, Lord. So I've given away the section already, but let's look at the whole section of John chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. I know maybe the first time you've heard the whole context around the famous John 3.16 verse. I hope not, but maybe it is, and maybe we all learn a little something today for those who is more familiar. Verse 1, Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs of, that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Or what do we also say? Born again. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it. But you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very... Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in Him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that everyone who believes in Him may not perish, but have everlasting life, eternal life. Verse 17, Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. The Word of God for the people of God. <coughs> Praise so it's night time. And we're getting a visit here from a very important fellow. Someone who's high ranking in the Jewish ruling council. A Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews, came to Jesus at night. Some interesting clues there. This begins one of the best known stories in scripture and also probably one of the most important ones. He probably came under the cover of darkness because he was a ruling member of the Jewish ruling council, the JRC. 
How embarrassing it would be if they discovered that a member of this council was consulting with an itinerant preacher from Nazareth. That wouldn't look good at all. Nothing good can come from Nazareth. <laughs> Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher of the law, verse 2, who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Now, if he got anything right, he nailed that one, didn't he? It's a, that's a startling statement, though, if you're a member of the ruling council. <clears throat> Because he says that we know you are a teacher who has come from God. I wonder if he was being sincere. What do you think? Is this the way he feels? Yes. Good. Very truly, though, Jesus responds to him, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless you are born again. And the NRSV says born from above. Now I want you to hear... Maybe these words as if for the first time, because we get when we hear born again, born again Christians, sometimes that has negative connotations for the work they've done on planet Earth. But let's take Jesus' words at face value. No one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. What would that mean? What would that look like to be called born again and to be born again. Well, Nicodemus is wondering the exact same thing. He takes Jesus' words literally. How can someone be born when they are old? Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb and be born again. Here's the problem. Jesus and Nicodemus are speaking two different languages. Jesus is speaking in the Spirit. Nicodemus is speaking in the flesh. So then we pick up verse 5. Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of what? Water and spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh. Spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying that you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the spirit. So this is a little mystery. Y'all can leave room for a little mystery, can't you? Jesus is talking about spiritual rebirth. He's saying that we can't enter the kingdom of God unless we're born of this water and spirit stuff. Let's agree for the time being that the water he's referring to is our Christian baptism. What does the Lord mean by being born of the spirit? Is that some kind of emotional experience? Do I plop around on the ground and speak in an unknown tongue? Is that what it means? What does the Lord mean by being born of the Spirit? Is it much, much more? He says flesh gives birth to flesh, but Spirit gives birth to Spirit. Craig Brian Larson tells the story of a bright young woman named Mary Ann who was working her way through college by cleaning dorm rooms. Anybody ever clean the dorm room? <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> Stay away. <laughs> it's bad. I was an RA assistant, so I helped the RA at our dorms go around in undergrad and help clean up and check on people. It is nasty the way people live. Some people. Not all y'all. Some people. But she was often annoyed. These people never said thank you. These people never say please. They're just not kind, not grateful. So she goes to her one of her professors disillusioned and disgusted and she she goes and he she, she said I've been taking all these philosophy courses we talk about what's true we talk about what's important we talk about what's good well how do you teach people to be good he answered according to the Bible it's not education but conversion no one can truly learn to be good, for God alone is perfectly good. The light of true goodness dawns in the heart only when God shines there. So we can try to be good, can't we? We can pretend to be good, but only if we're in God can we truly be good. That's hard stuff, though. What kind of lives would we live if God's light shined in our hearts? We'd be a little revival here every time we get together. It'd be great. Everything we know about Jesus' teachings, what can we conclude that He meant by saying that if we enter the kingdom of God, we must be born again? Well, the first thing He must be telling us is that we become a new person. New you. A new you. When we're 
born the first time, were we born an old person? No. Unless you're Benjamin Button. <laughs> no. You're born a new person. Wouldn't a rebirth imply that once again we become a new person? That there would be some change needed in life? There's this transformation of uh, Reverend John Buchanan does a good job of talking about this. He retired after 48 years of being a Presbyterian minister. He wrote an article in which he looked back over a half century of ministry. He remembered one Sunday service in which he was baptizing a two-year-old. Y'all please bring me your kids for baptism before they get two. <laughs> you ever held a two-year-old? They're a little big and they're squirmy and they kind of pay attention. They kind of don't pay attention. Anyway, after the child had been baptized with water, John Buchanan, following the directions of the Presbyterian prayer book, put his hands on the little boy's head and addressed him in Trinitarian language, said, You are a child of God, sealed by the Spirit in your baptism, and you belong to Christ forever. Unexpectedly, the little boy looked up and replied, Uh-oh, <laughs> That's an amusing little moment. And in the church, we like when little things like that happen. It's cute. But there's something about that. Uh oh. But Cannon writes that it was an appropriate response. A stunning theological affirmation from the mouth of this child that, uh oh, was recognition that everything had changed. From That is, this boy would never be the same. And isn't that true when we baptize somebody? We're believing that God's doing a work in their life. Therefore, they can't be the same. They're a new creation. Even though they're just fresh out the womb. They can be born again too when time's right for them, of course. So in light of Christ's life and teaching, what changes would likely take place if we were to experience this new birth that Jesus is talking about? This one that He recommends to Nicodemus. Well, we do know that if we did this stuff, we became born again, we're going to experience new stuff in life. We're going to become new, and we're going to have this new outward focus instead of an inward focus. And I've talked about that a lot in church. We're born into this physical world, and what do we do? We're born grasping. Reaching out to clean and to hold on to things. Isn't that the first movement of a baby's uh, hands? They to clutch, grasp, and hold. You put your finger in a little baby's hand, what do they do? Whoop! The cutest thing. But babies, we, we can recognize they're cute, they're cuddly, they're lovable. But we also have to face the fact that nature has fashioned the human infant to be utterly focused on its own needs. Amen, Mom and Daddy, Grandma, Grandpa? A new baby wants what it wants, when it wants. That baby don't care if you're watching your favorite TV program, reading the newspaper, doing chores outside, whatever you're doing, that baby will get your attention and have its needs met. That drive towards oneself is essential. It's self-preservation. It's natural. It works for survival. But the progress of maturity, of growth, is to learn to escape self-centeredness. Being able to accommodate others in the framework of one's life. That's, there's a natural process of the physical world. We start off self-centered and then we learn to share that dominion. You ever watch kids? They have a dominion over all the stuff. But if we become new persons, we have to go further in this, would we not? We have to focus on others' needs just as intently as we focus on our own. And that's the whole purpose is that we might reflect the image of God, image of Christ back onto the world for His sake. But that's, that's difficult for some people. This change is difficult. Especially when the emphasis has been on ourselves. A new focus would say we should love the Lord our God with all our heart and love our neighbors as ourselves. You ever heard that before? I bet you have. That would be what that kind of transformation would look like. And if we're truly born again, we, it comes with this whole new system of values. Our values will change. One of the things that happens when we grow up is that we obtain values from our families, from our teachers, from our friends. That's how values happen. 
When we acquire them from the environment in which we live, it's kind of detrimental though, to our new birth experience. And when we have this new birth experience, well then we will obtain new values from our Creator, from the one we worship. The problem, many of these things that we cherish most, our possessions, our nice homes, our affluent lifestyles, would have least, a lot less interest if we were born again. The things that this world could buy would dim in their glitter and glory. Our eyes would be fixed on the world, a new heaven and a new earth. An outward focus that's new and a new set of values, that's what we, we're going to get, we should be focused on. But also in the third place, if we truly experienced a new birth, wouldn't that naturally lead to us having a new family? You're a new person, you got a new set of values, you're part of a new family. You should look at your neighbor and say, hey brother, hey sister. If that's what's sitting by you. When you're born for the first time in this world, you're born into a family. When you're born into the kingdom of God, you have a new family. Not a family of the flesh, but family of the spirit. Now then, who are my brothers and my sisters? Jesus would answer that, right? He was asked that question one time. He said, who is my mother and who are my brothers? Pointing to his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers, for whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister. Matthew 12, 48, 50. When you experience a new birth, you acquire a new family. Paul talks about this new family. He says, There's neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. That's Galatians 3:28. Sounds to me, after reading these things from Jesus and Paul, that to experience uh, rebirth is to be part of a new family. With brothers and sisters. If we are truly born again, we must be a new human. A better human. A better version, right? 2.0. Me. We have a new outward as well as an upward focus for our lives. We would have a new set of values. Many of the things we worry about would seem trivial. We'd have a new family. Think about how that would affect you if everyone around you was your brother and sister. Your family. I read recently about someone, this is my last story, who uh, had an ex a, a deep love for her extended family. Every year, ice skating instructor Elizabeth O'Donnell puts on a very special ice show. With years of experience in the ice capades, you would think that O'Donnell only teaches the creme de la creme of skating students. She'd probably agree with you. For O'Donnell specializes in teaching physically and mentally disabled people to ice skate. She taught ice skating for the first few years after she left the ice capades, but she didn't feel challenged in her work. So she created her own challenge, teaching the joys of ice skating to the blind. Doesn't sound easy at all. But it proved rewarding for Elizabeth. So she went on to found the Skating Association for the Blind and the Handicapped, now known as Gliding Stars. Other ice skating instructors began volunteering their own time to her organization. Now more than 15,000 people have been through their classes. Every year the students put on a show to demonstrate their new skills. Wouldn't you love to see that? Yeah. Can you imagine though how rewarding it is to O'Donnell to see young people who otherwise would never have the opportunity to shine in front of an audience to become stars for the night? Can you imagine how rewarding it would be to you if you could look beyond your own life to invest yourself in others? I close with this. Jesus said it. And I just want to remind you. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born again. A new outward focus, a new set of values, a new family, so my last question to you, are you ready to be born again? If 
you are, let's talk about it after service, shall we? But if you're already born again, well, we get to celebrate right here at the Lord's table. This is for the church family. It's also a converting grace, meaning you don't have to be a member of this church. Wesley believed, John Wesley, a founder of our Methodism movement, believed that it could be a converting <coughs> place where you may not have it all worked out, you may not know exactly what you're doing, but God's doing something, amen? amen. So that means you don't have to be a member of the church to participate. Oh, I just shot that everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you see it? <laughs> Somebody playing tricks on me up here. <laughs> so if you would turn with me now in your hymnals to page 12, we'll celebrate the sacraments together of Holy Communion. A great place to get born again. Because it's Christ our Lord who invites to His table all who love Him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with God and one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God. We confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Here's some good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. This proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, church, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Musicians, 
the others will lead, lead you the rest of the way. Please stand and join us as we close up today's service with Yes He Can and Days of the Life.